In today's photo deconstruction, I'm going to take you behind the scenes of a fetish wear fashion shoot using neon green. Hey everybody, Lindsay Adler here. And throughout the year, I teach a variety of different themed intensive workshops. For example, I have some that are on avant-garde beauty, some are on fashion photography, others are on advanced lighting. And one of the workshops that I teach is themed fetish wear fashion. In fact, this year I have an event called the Bear Elegance event. This is a three-day event. It's all about photographing the human form. The first day is fine art nude. The second day is burlesque and fetish. And the third day is boudoir. The image that we're going to talk about today is actually from last year's fetish wear fashion workshop. Now, I want to show you the lighting, what I captured in camera versus what was achieved in post-processing. But as with anything, it begins with a good idea and preparation ahead of time. So Brianna, who's one of my muses I photograph all the time, she showed me these incredible gloves and mind-blowing shoes. And she let me know that for the shoes, it would be something that she'd need to uh, have a prop to balance on. And so I was trying to figure out what prop I could possibly include in this that would match the entire theme. And so I went online. Actually, I have these boxes uh, that were originally for product display, but I picked them up on sale with a, a going out of business sale for a department store. So I picked up these boxes, but they're just solid white. What I did is I went online and I got checkerboard wallpaper. And then we covered the boxes with this wallpaper so that it would match her gloves as well as the shoes. Now, Brianna showed up with this incredible wig. The wig is awesome. Um, it is beautifully styled, super bright neon green. But these sorts of wigs can look really cheap unless lit correctly or styled correctly. So what I decided to do is just lean into the use of that color make the color the moment, make it uh, super saturated, poppy, almost like you would see in like a drag photo shoot, but in this case, it's for fetish wear. And so that's why you see it incorporated throughout the image. All right, so before we talk about what was captured in camera, let's actually pop over to the behind the scenes. So for this shot, I was using four different strobes. Uh, each one is contributing something very particular, something very specific to the image. The image would not be the same if I only used one, two, or three strobes. I really need the four for this impact. So let me show you. We're going to begin with our main light over here on the left-hand side. I'm using a Weska optical spot, and I am using the kit lens and just creating a slice of light down her face, which is what you can actually see here in this image. It is a focused, concentrated light. In the final effect, you can see that the optical spot is what allows her to light her face and then down to mid-torso area. That's our main light. But then she would basically just be floating head, like everything else would fall to shadow. So when she falls to shadow, I need to do something to fill in the shadows. And that is where our second light comes into play over here on the right hand side. It's that, that bright light that you see it is a bare strobe with a green gel, a saturated green gel. And I had it bouncing just into the white wall right behind camera. It was maybe three, four feet behind the camera. What that does is it bounces the light everywhere it fills in the shadows on the subject, on the background, all of it with green. So anywhere you see green in this photo, except for the wig, it's from that fill bounce light. So on the checkerboard boxes, on her body, on the background. Now, similarly, the reason that we chose a white background is because this bounce light needed to fill in everywhere. And if we went with a darker gray or another color, it wouldn't fill in correctly. So a white background was important to this. So we've got our main, we've got our fill, but how about that cool background texture? The background that I'm using there is uh, a Profoto D2 with an optical spot. And then in it, there is a gobo. This is a checkerboard gobo. Uh, there's some of these in my, my abstract gobo kit. There's also a variety of these that you can get online, uh, but it looks like a checkerboard. And so I specifically sought this out ahead of the shoe, knowing what her gloves and her shoes look like and knowing I was wrapping the box. You can see how each of the concepts are building upon each other. Now, this one over here on the left-hand side that's lighting the background, with the Westcott optical spot, the way we designed it is there's a kit lens that's a 150. There is another lens that you can get additionally, which is a 50 millimeter lens, which is lighting the background more broadly, but this is actually before that second lens came out. And so on the background, I'm using a Canon EF 24 to 70 lens. The uh, Westcott optical spot, it allows you to attach any EF lens onto it. You can use that. Just know that the bigger the lens is, or if it's an F4 lens or something like that, it does eat quite a bit of light. It, it's, it doesn't appear quite as bright as the kit lenses. So just know this if you're going to try. 
So that's why on this one, we had the 24 to 70. We used the uh, checkerboard pattern. And that's actually why you'll see that I was shooting at F4 ISO 800 because that background using uh, the non-kit lenses made it a little bit darker. I wanted to make sure that it was letting a lot of light in, which is why we went with F4 ISO 800. Now, there's one more light because we have optical spot main, optical spot with the gobo, the pattern on the background, then that bounce fill. So the last light is the rim light you see over here to the right-hand side. It is a one by four foot strip softbox. And that is what lights the side of her hair. And if we go back over here, gives her that little highlight on her butt, the little highlight on her shoe, the little highlight on her hair and shoulder. So technically I could do without this light, but I think it really adds a beautiful polish and leans into the fetish wear side of this concept. All right, so uh, one more thing I wanted to mention, you'll notice this strip softbox that has this black flag underneath it. It's just basically a, a black square, a black rectangle. It could have been a piece of cardboard, um, but flags are used to block light. In this case, it is blocking that light from hitting the ground because you'll notice in this final shot, the ground is nice and saturated green. If that strip softbox were allowed to hit the ground, the ground would appear white. It would wash it out. If you don't know how gels work, definitely check out my class, The Magic of Gels, where I go into this in detail. So you can see optical spot on the face, green filling in everywhere, optical spot on the background, rim light on the hair, the bottom, and the shoe. So let's see what I captured versus where we ended up. So this is straight out of camera. This was no adjustments, no contrast, no nothing. And it already looks pretty good. It's just not saturated enough. Uh, and in this case, you know, the light is bouncing over a long distance. Uh, also soft light often doesn't appear quite as saturated uh, as a hard light. So what I did is I just took the green, I went into the green channel, like you can specifically go into HSL, select greens, pump it up and saturate it. And I just, I did that, I saturated it. It just didn't quite go as far as I wanted. So the last part of the equation is my retouch. There's very little on her that I needed to retouch. Like I, I got rid of where the little harness was sticking out a little bit to give myself some cleaner lines. And then I also brightened up the uh, gobo. It kind of faded on the edges of that lens. So I cleaned that up a little bit more. And then I saturated the green everywhere, including on her hair. I also decided I wanted to go with a little bit of a warmer skin tone rather than paling her out. So this is where we started and this is where we ended. And so all of the ingredients were there and it just needed a little finesse and post-processing to make it really pop. This green has been my obsession for the last couple of years because I think it is eye-catching, it's scroll-stopping, it's unusual, uh, and hopefully I'll be able to shoot a lot more of this in the future because I'd like to have a little collection of it on my website. This image is impactful for a lot of reasons. Of course, it's the beautiful model, the really interesting styling, but it was the planning ahead of time to make sure I had a gobo that matched. I had props that matched. She had gloves that matched. So it looks like a really purposeful image because it was. Now, I had all of that planning going into it, but then of course the poses and the exact lighting was a little bit more spontaneous in the moment. It was pre-planning, the lighting and the post-production, all of the things together that leads to an eye-catching, like popping image just like this one. Now, if you wanna see the gear that I used to make this image, all of that is linked in the description below. And hopefully you've enjoyed this photo deconstruction. So I encourage you to like, subscribe, share it with friends. And if you wanna join me in person, check out learnwithlindsay.com, go to the workshops, because these are the types of looks that I do in my workshops. This one's for the fetish wear workshop. You could also see at the Bare Elegance event. And then I have a lot of really bright, colorful, poppy images created like this at my fashion intensive workshops as well. All right, guys. Thank you for joining me and be sure to tune in because I have a lot more videos just like this one coming your way. See you next time.